Hello Virgo, welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber. If you're new, welcome, hope you enjoy the reading. Um, this is a general life reading. Please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, right, we seem to have, um, I'm going to start with the 10th house here. The uh, 10th house is to do with your uh, career aspirations, uh, but it can also be to do with your uh, reputation, your fame, if that is something that you are involved in, um, but it's your profile, you know, your how others see you. Um, it can also be about authority figures um, and dealing with those, either working under them or um, governmental situations. Uh, it can also be to do with um, an authority figure in your actual environment. Now, this can be like a father figure or a um, somebody else that you kind of look up to. It can be masculine or feminine, but quite often it's associated with an authority figure, somebody who is has some power and authority in your life. Now, um, it can also be to do with, um, you know, what you are moving towards from a career perspective. Uh, perspective. So this can be like your purpose or your, um, you know, what you're building up, what you're trying to build up at this time. So now um, we have underneath, we've got the uh, Grand Cross Provoker. And then at the top, we've got Damara Guiding Children. So uh, this can be read in a number of ways. Um, the Grand Cross is saying that there's quite a bit of energy on you, um, on you at the moment. Now, this is normally from different angles, four different angles coming down on you. So it can feel like pressure, uh, a lot of pressure, um, and it's coming from all different areas, uh, all different ways, all different um, directions. And it's almost like the energies are competing with each other. It's got that very strong energy. It can be a very frustrating energy. It can be very... Um, like pressurized, you know, it can make it diamonds are created uh, with this kind of pressure. So it's kind of digging deep to find out uh, where you need to go and what you need to do. But it can also be about juggling or multitasking with all your skills, all your abilities um, and uh, and trying to, you know, using all of that to move yourself forward. You could have a lot of opportunities coming at you all at once, um, or it could be to do with something that you're trying to do and you've got literally one um, hurdle after another coming like that, you know, just coming at, uh, flowing at you from all different angles. So it's very much about um, uh, inner strength, learning how to use your inner strength. It's about building up stamina, fortitude, determination. There is success on the other side of this and you will learn a lot during this process. It's a very steep learning curve, this. Um, so, it, But it can feel a bit frustrating at times because you just seem to sort one thing out and then something else comes up. So it's a bit like putting out fires or you are using all your, you know, your everything that you've got to work your way through um, multiple directions and multiple things happening. So that all comes in with the Grand Cross. Now, we have got at the top Damara guiding children. So this may be, you may be involved with children or ch children's activities. There could be um, a, a, from a career perspective, or it could be something that you're involved in where you've got a higher profile to do with children. Um, it can also be um, involved with children's things, you know, things to do with children. So it says here, you are good at helping, counseling and healing children. Use your skills to help children now. So as I said, it could be a profession thing um, or it could be a legacy that you're building up for your own, um, your own children, if that is something that you're working on. Uh, but it's like a, a goal. It's it's an ambition that you have, you know. So uh, it could also be um, it could also be saying that aspects or um, things associated with children may be coming into your tenth house in some form. Now, it could also be that um, it, the counselling may be coming in as well because counselling is is coming in on the seventh house here. So it could be to do with that. But it can also be. Uh, to do with your inner child, you know, if none of those other things are uh, resonating for you, then it could be to do with your inner child, which is, um, it, it may be something um, in your 10th house, which is kind of, the, the Grand Cross is a catalyst for movement and also for change, all right, so it seems that something 
needs to be addressed here or something needs to be heard. And it could very well be your own inner child is trying to tell you something. Or you have suppressed some aspect of your inner child, uh, your inner child's voice, or something that you longed or wanted to do when you were a child. And it's got to do with what you want to do in your life, you know. Um, so it could be to do with that. But inner child comes in very strongly with tomorrow or anything to do with children whatsoever. So it's quite often to do with something that has been ignored or put aside um, or it hasn't been acknowledged in some form. Uh, it could have been silenced through parental things or through schooling even, you know. Some aspect may have just been suppressed uh, uh, and, uh, and it's time to let that out now. Listen uh, and go with what you feel and uh, listen to, you know, go back to your earlier days and see what it is that perhaps has been pushed aside or needs to come out now at this time. Now, we have also got Sikh coming in here, quiet time. So take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. All right. So somewhere in all of your goings on here, there's a lot of transformation occurring. You're going to need to do this on a regular basis. And I say that because Grand Cross can put you under a lot of pressure with regards to time or the timing of things. So prioritization, prioritizing things, um, having times in the day when you do certain things or, or planning times in to do with your children or these children's aspects or things to do with children or whatever they may be. Um, it can also be listening, as I said, to your inner child. So you may need to plan this in, especially if you've got a lot going on. Um, prioritization, time management and um, stamina, you know, actually um, working through things. Um, it can also be consolidation of things uh, can come in with Grand Cross. It can also be about um, communication with others. So this may be to do with your own children or to do with your own inner child, as I said. And this may require going in, going inward. Quiet time is always about spending time um so it says here, take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. There's something to do with that which is going to help you. It's going to give you guidance uh, with everything that is occurring at this time, but you need to listen. Um, meditation is about listening, all right? Listening to yourself and listening to God, you know, whatever spirit um, guidance that you get. It could even just be impressions, or it could also be um, songs, lyrics, uh, It you know, Information can come to you from a, a many different sources, but you need to be in that contemplative present frame of mind. Um, and that will help you to open the gates to allow that information and also to allow information to bubble up or guidance to bubble up. And I feel that may be to do with the inner child situation. But see, see quiet time is going to be required on and off here through a number of uh, situations. And that's going to help you navigate um especially through this Grand Cross uh, situation. Now, we have got um, the seventh house. Seventh house is to do with relationships. Now, this is normally close, personal, one-on-one -on -one relationships. Now, this can be a committed partnership. Now, that can be, um, sorry, sorry about the dogs barking. That can be um, to do with a love relationship, but it can also be to do with a partnership, like a business partnership. So any close, personal, one-on-one -on -one partnership, but it can also be somebody that you're very close to, like a, a really, really close friend. Um, it can also be other people that you may be very closely associated with. It could even be this authority figure. So um, it's about that. It's also it can also be about marriage. Um, it's it's normally a committed or um, engagement or marriage, something like that. It's normally a committed relationship that comes in, a love relationship that comes into the seventh house. It can also cover the lower courts. So this may be to do with legal matters. You've got the ninth house here, so that could also be coming in. It could also be to do with, um, you know, balancing things between you and another or between you and others that you are close to at this time. Because uh, seventh house is the Libra house, the Libra house. So that's about balance. So coming to balance in things. It can also be uh, your, your social intelligence, you know, uh, awareness and interacting with others on a close personal basis. Now, at the bottom, we've got Mars coming in, and then at the top, we've got Dana High Priestess. So the Dana High Priestess is always about imparting knowledge of some kind uh, in some way. Now, this could be, as I said, uh, to uh, a business partner, or it could be to a friendship, or it could be to your uh, marriage partner or your relationship partner. Uh, it could also come in uh, through 
the social awareness, you know, interacting with others on a personal kind of a basis. It could be coming in from that. Um, if you are a legal person, it could be related to that, the lower courts. Now, the Mars is always about taking action in some way. Now, it's got force there. So the Mars energy is very powerful. This can be extremely powerful. So it depends on your Mars and how you are built and how you utilize Mars in your chart. But it's basically about action, your will. It's the god of war. It can also be about how you get things done. Venus is always about what you like or what you want, and Mars is how you get it. It's that it's that going after that hunting energy. But it can also be about um, defending or uh, defending yourself or facing a challenge uh, or um, kind of uh, putting your cards on the table and being very clear about a direction that you want to go in. Now, with this energy, it can also bring in impatience or quick temper. There could also be egos around, you know, e people's egos. As I said, in the seventh house, it's entirely possible. That could be um, an issue that needs to be dealt with. But I feel this is mostly to do with starting something or pushing forward on something. Uh, but it can also be, obviously, in a relationship, it can be to um, sexuality, it can be to passion. It could also be something that um, is going to motivate this relationship to move forward in some way with the Mars energies, that initiation. Um, and uh, it's, it might be a really a great idea, or it could be an action that needs to be taken in some form here. But it's it's initiating something and moving forward uh in some ways, it can be bulldozing, so just be careful with that. As I said, the ego things do come in sometimes, but certainly I feel it's about taking action, moving forward on something that needs to occur here. Now, with the Donna High Priestess, um, as I said, this is about receiving intuition and guidance, which we already talked about with Sikh, getting information. There is communication here. And she's got a lot of blue, but it's also about your will, which is your um, solar plexus, uh, your your um, confidence, your solar plexus uh, chakra, but also your throat chakra, which is your will and your voicing things. So things need to be said here, um, but it's following guidance. It says you have divine knowledge that can help others through your spiritual teaching. So this may be giving guidance to your person or to another um, or through a justice situation, legal situation, or it could be through interacting with others um, where you impart knowledge. Now, normally Donna is to do with uh, coursework, seminars, workshops, things like that, you know, imparting knowledge or putting it down into publishing, something like that. Now, this could be that even that you and your person may need to go into some sort of counseling situation that can also happen. Um, but it's it's to do with communication and there is uh, confidence involved here and moving forward, but also learning and impart, downloading information and imparting it to others. But th these are people that are uh, in your immediate environment or those that you are specifically working with at this time. Now, um, we have also got um, the ninth house coming in. But before I go on with that, I just want to mention that Mars um, this Mars energy is going to be important, I feel, in this month uh, for a number of reasons. But um, because you've got the Sagittarius energy, you've also got Scorpio and, as I said, the Mars and the ninth house. Um, the 4th of December is a solar eclipse, and that will be in Sagittarius. All right. And that's on the 4th of December. It's conjunct Mercury. And then you've got Chiron sitting in Aries, which is retrograde. Chiron is always about the past wounds, you know, emotional wounding and healing, healing of all kinds, whether it's a physical healing or an emotional healing. Um, and Mercury is always about expression, communication um, of all kinds. So I feel something will be said or communicated or you will receive information and it's going to bring up something from the past or an, an older wounding or it's to do with putting that to bed airing something to do with that and actually dealing with it. So 4th of December. Then um, the other aspect coming in is 8th of December, Mars will be in Scorpio. We've got Scorpio here. Mars will be in Scorpio and it's going to be squaring Jupiter, which is the ruler of Sagittarius. So I feel that, again, that date, um, Scorpio is always about things coming up from underneath. It's, it's, um, it's to do with sexual matters. It's also to do with the death of things, and this can be physical deaths, but it's normally to do with ego deaths, and I did mention ego here. It could also be to do with um, birthing or rebirthing, regeneration, and so on. 
And it's squaring Jupiter. And Jupiter is wants to free things. Jupiter wants to be expansive. Jupiter wants to uh, bring adventure and um, exploration into anything. It wants to expand your knowledge, expand what you're doing, um, and give you opportunities and luck. So I feel that, that um, there's going to be a little bit of a... Uh, a square is going to highlight some sort of weakness or some sort of area that needs to be worked on. So that is the 8th of December. Then on the 14th of December, Mars will then move into Sagittarius. And again, the Sagittarius energy is uh, J Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is very expansive, but it's also about seeing the big picture in some way. You could have luck. You could have opportunity. You could also have um, heightened intuition at that time, which is what we said with the Sikh quiet time. You need to access that, especially with the ninth house. Um, Sagittarius, ninth house is Sagittarius house. So uh, it could also be expansion of some kind, whether it's a physical expansion through travel or it could be through learning, uh, learning institutions and so on. So there's something coming in again, 14th of December. And then Jupiter, which is the ruler of Pisces, uh, sorry, of Jupiter of um, is the ruler of Sagittarius, moves into Pisces on the 30th of December. And I feel that's going to bring... Um, it's going to bring an opportunity or it's going to cool things down or it's going to um, create um, expansion in that area. Uh, and Pisces is always about dreams and about emotional things. It's also about connecting to the, your spiritual self or the universe. Uh, it can also be about um, overcoming things, you know, moving past things as well. So all of these aspects coming in. Now, um, ninth house, as I said, to do with higher education. So this is universities, adult education. It can also be to do with um, um, learning about aspects to do with philosophy, religion, or belief systems. Belief systems in the world are undergoing a massive transformation now. You have got the transformation card. Uh, it's also to do with the uh, intuition and intuitive processes. So that could be very strong right now. You've got sensitivity at the top there and Sagittarius at the bottom. So intuition is going to be peaked um, during this period. So use your intuition to guide you, as I said. Uh, it can also be about, uh, it could be foreign travel or long distance travel that may come in for some of you, but it can also be internal travel as in exploring your mind or philosophy, religion and belief system. So it's like opening your mind to certain things. It can also be um, learning from a, uh, an educational point of view, but it could also be to do with the law or legal matters may be featuring. All of these things come in with the ninth house. It could also be around publishing. Something may, may be coming in to pub, be published or expressed in some way. Um, and a teaching also comes in. And I said there was ch children coming in here. And there's, you've also got high priestess, which is to do with that. Okay. Expression of knowledge in a format or taking knowledge in which you then you're going to pass on to others. So, um, the ninth house can be all of those things. Very expensive house. Journalism may even be coming up in that. Um, but it's also to do with going on a sort of a sacred quest or a journey of some sort, whether it's internal or external, seeking the truth in some way. Now, with the Sagittarius energy, as I said, very expansive. This is a luck or a breakthrough possibly coming in. It could also be um, to do with... Um, getting your knowledge or your wisdom or your whatever it is that you want, you want to spread it out into the world. And it could be via foreign channels or people that are from other countries. It can also be people that are, um, you know, um, you could be connecting with them online. It could also be to do with a business which has got foreign concepts attached like import and export, customs, things like that. Maybe that's coming in. Um very expansive house. It's also about expression and opinions. Um, and um, it may be that with the, with the sensitivity house, you could have a few people around you who are very opinionated at the moment. Sagittarian people can be like that. Sometimes they go over the top with what they need to say. They can sometimes be very blunt, you know. So be careful what you're expressing at that time. Uh, it could be somebody else around you, but it could also be what you are saying right now. So uh, this is this is about being expansive and motivating and inspiring, but just that be careful that you don't go overboard. It could be over uh, 
over too much of something, too much of something um, going over the top in some way, shape or form here because you have got white tara sensitivity. So you are becoming increasingly sensitive. Avoid harsh relationships, environments, situations and chemicals. It could also be to do with taking something into your body which is not good for you. Now, this could be a chemical substance. It could be anything that you're taking into your body. It could also be via media. You could be exposing yourself to too much negative media or negative opinions of others. Um, or it could be um, aspects that you're just not, uh, that are just not going to work for you in this house. It could be travel related, you know. Um, so be careful what you take into your body. Be careful what you allow in. Um, Go through your home, remove toxic things, um, and also this could be toxic ideas um, in the ninth house. It could also be um, environmental, as in uh, you know going somewhere or journeying to somewhere which is actually not suitable for you. You may have to filter out the noise um, or aspects that you're taking into the body which are not working for you because you're increasingly sensitive. So this is a good time to go into the intuitive process. As I said, the quiet time, listen to your intuition, let that guide you, and um, learn and understand and, and explore things, uh, but just be dis, dis, uh, discerning about what you are doing, okay? And um, this could, you know, as I said, it could even be, some of you may be traveling to go and visit certain people at this time of the year, end of the year, it does happen uh, for Christmas or New Year or whatever the situation will, will be, but be careful with that um, and limit exposure to those who are going to trigger you or to situations or environments that are going to trigger you, okay? Be careful with that, especially this time of the year. We have also got, um, uh, as I said, Scorpio transform. So somewhere in amongst here, it could have been to do with the Mars energy, which is in Scorpio until the 14th of December. Um, it's saying that some things may come up now with the Scorpio energy, things rise up from underneath. But it can also be to do with sexuality, which may come into the seventh house. It could also be to do with, um, as I said, um, you know, the death of something or the falling away of something. So this is normally a death associated with a transition um, from, from you know, within you. And this is normally to do with an ego death. It can, in some cases, be a, a physical death, but it's usually to do with other aspects of your life which are falling away or transforming in some way, shape, or form. It can also be a rebirth or a regeneration, like the phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, so all of those issues come in. It can also be airing things, things rising up which need to be said or expressed and this can be in the in the form of fears or anger even manipulation which comes from a fear actually could be rising up all of these things as i said there may be some ego issues coming in whether it's yours or somebody else's um it can also be um somebody um engineering things you know that could also be coming in with scorpio control manipulation does come in with the scorpio energy as well so what you want to do is tap into the psychic side of scorpio as i said with your sick quiet time and your ninth house you want to go that route rather and listen to what is being said and what is coming into your awareness and dealing with things that come up in a in a balanced and um a communicative way, you know, so all of that, but transformation, something is transforming within your environment here with it. it could even be career related. Something could be coming up to do with that. Uh, something is being transformed. It could even be an old attitude or a belief or something which has been sitting in your, in underneath. And this is where the guiding children, as I said, with the self, listening to your inner child, it could be something from your inner child or your early childhood. Uh, which may be rising up now and it needs to come out. Uh, something needs to be uh, expressed or, or you need to listen, you know, something to do with that.